So what I've done up here is I've just put a little bit of linseed oil and uh, titanium white up in the sky, just like that. And what I'm gonna do, might as well just use this big brush. I've already pre-mixed some blue, red and white to the consistency I want for the sky. Might as well just pop this in here, just like that. Look at, look at that. Very nice, very nice already. Okay, anyone who knows Yorkshire will probably know this, this scene. This is Brimham Rocks up in North Yorkshire and it's a beautiful place. And I've taken a few different photographs of, of these rocks, the rocks that have been left over from the ice age. And what I've done is I've concocted, uh, concocted or concocted, I don't know. Uh, I've made a, a nice little composition of some rocks at this side and a big main rock in the middle, looking down onto the, the valley below just like that so it's not a true representation of of the rock formation but it, i've taken some of the best bits if that makes sense okay so i'm just floating in some sky color just up there and of course we want it whiter and paler down towards the horizon so very little very little blue paint just down there and the sketch i've done is in pencil okay sometimes you can paint it in but i did it in pencil because of the complexity of the rock work and the uh, the coming together of a few different elements okay I'm just gonna grab a little bit of French ultramarine onto that maybe that might be a bit too strong maybe okay and just vary the flavor of some of this sky up here I want a bit more a bit more darker up here especially into the corners maybe even, maybe even grade it off me grade it off a little bit so just work that in, just there. And we may put some clouds on. When we've blended this out, it may look, it may look like there's some distant floatery clouds that we can't really tell up there. We'll have to see, we'll have to see what happens. Okay, so set that down, grab a big, big dry brush. And I'm gonna start at the light spot and then go out into the darker parts, okay? And we just scrub that in. The sky is right. all, all in place. And I did put a few little clouds in there. So I've taken a little bit of uh, burnt umber, white, and some of this blue from the sky in there, paled it off. And we're gonna paint these far away, little distant, little distant hills. And I'm just gonna scrub this in. Of course, this is dry. We want this to be dry. So, so we can either lay his hands on the canvas or we can layer paint a lot easier than we can do if we've got a layer of linseed oil down here. And we can regulate the the, the colour really a little bit better because if, we, if we're putting a lot of if we're putting a lot of linseed oil and titanium white on and we're trying to put a little bit of dark paint on top of it, it's going to go a little bit greyer and uh, and you know and, and we can make a little bit of mush and we don't really want to do that. We want to want a nice clean painting. So I'm just going to go over there. I've got a tree in my in my mind that's coming up here just to case this side in and make the composition a little bit neater but we'll just put it on and we can paint over that if we need to and it'd be nice to see a little bit of that through so this is just a little bit of a pale really pale brownie color and i'm having it going up at a slight angle up there so it leads his eye down this way where where we're going to have the focal point round about there so we'll just pop that in. And of course, we'll wipe the brush off. Whoop. Wipe the brush off. I'm just gonna grab a bit more of the white paint and I'm just gonna miss the base of that, just like you would do on a, on a big old mountain. I'm just gonna miss this, like that. Really firm, scrubbing it in with that filbert brush, like so. Grab a bit more white. There, like so, like that. Go up to the top of the hill if you want to. Because we're just going to come and, and and sort of like blend the top of this out as well. Just very, very gently. So it looks far away. As things are far, far away, they become a lot more diffused, if that makes sense. If it were nice and sharp, then we would, uh, then we would uh, have a little bit of a problem. So it become too close and we don't want it too close. So very gently go over the top of that like that because this is very dry paint that we put on it won't mix into the sky that much there like 
So, so I'm just going to take a touch of we'll touch burnt umber into that. We'll make it a little bit stronger just there. Maybe a touch of this blue in there. See what this looks like. So we want another range of of, of hills or just a little bit of land. If that's too dark. We may peel it off a little bit, but I'm just going to, again, just scrub some of this in like that. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit more blue and white. There, now, there, there. Of course, just, just push it in. Now, of course, I hope, I hope people don't start saying that's not the hill range. That, that you know, Penny again doesn't look like that. And, and Inglebury doesn't look like that and all this look. I know, I know, I'm just using a little bit of artistic license just to make a, a composition based around this rock formation. These are the stars of the show. So we just want some background material popping in out here. So what I'm doing now, I've got all the, the green down. I'm obviously gonna tinker with that every now and again, but I've just got a little bit of a, on this little brush, a little bit of a dark, browny colour, similar to the, the hills out there. There's a little bit of green mixed in with this as well. And I'm just going to put the indication of some some trees and things that live just down here. And if if they don't look like trees, then we can make them into to rocks that are sticking out the grass work, I suppose. We point, painted the, the grasses in and then just, just pull it out. Pull it into the grass work. So with the, uh, the the landscape all in place, we may come back and tinker with it. I've just got a a grey, a grey a, a browny, muddy colour really. Uh, uh, but I'm just gonna go across and and put in these rocks. Now I don't want this this rock formation just here to be as strong as what's going to be up here. You know, this is again down on another cliff that starts out there looking down so and I think we've got a tree I want a tree round about there as well that makes sense and, and we're gonna have a tree just there as well and maybe a little bit of a path that goes to the edge of the cliff okay but for now I'm just gonna take this color uh, and I'm just gonna scrub in really get that color pushed right into the fabric um, the canvas Okay, so I've got the base colour down for all the rocks down here. And we've got some little gaps there just where we're going to put some trees. Now I'm going to mix up a little bit of a dark colour with some uh, browns, touch of black, blue thrown into that as well. I'm going to start sculpting some of these rocks. Now the rock formations, I've got a little bit of a reference photograph just down there. Some of the rock formations are kind of like like jaggedy now if this is not mixing or sticking or, or or whatever we may have to just take off the excess paint off these rocks but i just want to put a little bit of dark color down that looks like a natural place there and a little bit of dark color down to start shaping there like that now, just work on individual ones, like so. And then we can back, come back in, give it a bit of an highlight. Uh, big boulder, I think, that looks like that. Now, you don't want them to look flat, that's the problem. What you're gonna face, it could start to quickly look flat, so you, need lots and lots of different colours in there as well to give the appearance of big old rocks. Okay, so I've got this rock face in place now and we're just adding on top of this, this colour here, just some dark colours. We're going to have a, a, a layer of grass here and we've got some of this, uh, some of this stone colour going there. So we'll, we'll, we'll carry on doing some of this as well. Uh, we've got the path put in, or 
a, a guide to where the path is and of course as always we want it narrower towards the uh, the middle part of the painting and wider down at the bottom and that'll give the impression of distance uh, of course we'll, we'll work on the path because we want it like slightly eroded away as as many people come to see this beauty spot but we'll just throw this in these two holes there they're going to be trees and we're going to have a, a third tree there as well so don't think uh don't think that i've missed some out <laughs> you know but uh we'll, I'll, I'll show you what i did on those stones on this set here okay so i'm just adding this in just some colors just pushing it in plenty of paint give it a nice big thick texture as well and then we can come back and add some highlights and some grasses around this area as well. Happy, happy days. So I'm just taking some Van Dyke Brown and, and Burnt Sienna. I'm just going to really push in this path just there. Then we can work the grass around that, you see. I started to paint the grass and I thought, mm, let's paint the path first and then see where we go from there. Okay, I'm going to add a little touch of red. Just a bit of cad red into that brown mix just down here just so maybe maybe a bit more paint on the brush might help there we go just push it in so it, it's nicer and warmer as it comes to us. there we go like that and we've got to get us perspective right because we don't want this path to look like it's going uphill when we're looking down so we're going to do a little bit of chopping and changing as we go along and then we can of course we can highlight it and if the, the light i don't know if i mentioned it is coming from this side from the uh, from the right hand side there we go like that so we can have some shadows in the path as well maybe it wants to be a little such wider there make make the path as you know, you know wider because by the time you come and put the uh the stuff around it, the, the, the foliage and things, it will uh, it will shrink. Right there, just some just some grasses just down there like that. Go into the stone because we can paint over that. Okay, and I think that area is almost complete. We may come back and tinker with it, but we're gonna start blocking in some of the stonework that's down here. And uh, to do that, we'll just take some white some burnt sienna and burnt umber and uh, we'll put a touch of blue in with that as well just to give it a bit of a, a grey stony colour gotta be careful because some of the some of the blues in that may turn the stony colour a little shade of green and I'm just gonna just just block in this colour pretty much similar to how we we, we blocked in the colour on the uh, on the stones over there we do the same on this side and i think it's got a little bit of a lip there a big motorbike going past really scrub that in and then we can work out exactly where the uh, the shadows are in these stones so it really gets off plenty of paint plenty of paint it's going to be lighter on this side so a little bit more maybe white on there mixed into that and then around like so and down over there like that and this this uh this is where many 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 millennia of erosion from the the elements from the ice age uh, as a worn this away i try and put a little bit of a picture up of what kind of stone i'm trying to paint it is very it looks like a giant mushroom really it's, it's very bizarre and you've got to see it to believe it folks you've got to see it to believe it but it's very it's, it's wonderful wonderful area yorkshire is a wonderful area you know i say that a lot but uh it certainly is. So with a mixture of all three browns, that's Van Dyke, Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna all there, just in its brush, okay. I'm just trying to sketch out some of these erosion lines that are on the, the trunk of this rock. Just like that, and we're thinking rounded, like we would do a tree trunk. 
I think there's some that are in shadow as well. Uh, I'll just get it round like so. I'll just scrub some of this paint in there. Okay, so I think that part's in highlight, so this part will be in shadow underneath the rock. So I may touch a bit of black into that and then work that in. Okay, it won't stay true black as soon as we hit the canvas. It'll pick up every single colour that we've got down there. But it'll give us a nice indication of where where the, the shadows will be. Okay, get a bit too much gob on your paintbrush. Just wipe it off and we can start again. So it's not a, it's not a, a quick job this but it, it is quite quite rewarding and we're going to put some blue down in the shadows i think there's a little bit of a a gouge out the stone there and then this part's in shadow <laughs> gotta be careful what this looks like <laughs> not if you know you know okay so um, we're gonna just just sketching a few little shadowy things there we'll work more on the detail of the rock in a bit but we're just putting some little dark marks on there just to give us an idea i've taken a step back and had a little bit of a look at the uh, the composition as it is and i'm not too happy at a couple of aspects of this this area here where it's green it's a couple of shades lighter than this greenery here but it's a little bit hard to tell that there is a cliff there okay so i'm going to try and pale this area off here so just like separation. I also may put another rock up here or something like that. And I want to work on the path and maybe have the path starting here and going downhill. But uh, what we'll do first is take a little bit of white and yellow. And then I'm just going to work in a little bit of a misty area just down here. Now, I don't want it too strong. Just enough, just a little little area there like that and then work it back and that might create a little bit of a break in between there like that just throw some dark pathy colors down there widen that path up there as well like that because we'll put some more highlights and shadows in this path as we go along there we go, plenty of paint there. Set that path down into the painting with a little bit of yellow and green. So um, when well, I've got that brush on, I'm just going to get some sap green down here. A little bit of yellow. And up here, just scrubbing the undercolour of some grasses. Okay, really put it in. Okay, plenty of paint, plenty of paint down here maybe I'm darken it off a touch with a bit of brown in that as well and just push in this paint and vary the colors every time you reload the brush put different colors in there as well Got a rogue air on the brush there okay so just push it in a bit of green around here as well gotta be careful around the rock just working on this big old rock that looks like something out of space and I'm just very gently putting a little bit of, of highlight on some of this. Now the photograph I have, there is a shadow side underneath there where we painted and this is in shadow but it didn't look right for the, uh, for the composition so we're just going to add a little bit of colour here and there just picking out with this very soft delicate brush just some highlights there like that just keep layering it on that's why I'm using a soft brush it's, it's it's nice for layering paint on top of each other rather than rather than a scrubby brush if you know what I mean just pop some on there So, because the rock is almost complete, and we're not going to paint anything over the top of it, I've got a little bit of dark colour. Now, this is just this is just 
Van Dyke brown and and black and some thin oil. And I'm just going to tweak a couple of these cracks and lines, hardly touching the canvas. And we can just add a little bit of extra detail with this. Uh, so wherever we want one of these erosion lines, that's where we'll pop it. As we get less paint on the on the brush, we can go into the, some of the highlighted parts. Now, let that reload, and we can put another one just there. If it becomes too strong or looks too out of place, we can just take the brush and just blend it into the stonework and start again. We can also, with the same colour and brush, um, got to be careful where we put our finger here, uh, add some detail to this rock as well. So just uh, now, this is not <laughs> got a sticky finger now. Um, this is not an exact copy of the rock that's actually on uh, Primum Rocks. It's, it's a very, very close second though. But um, well, that crack going down there. You know, we've just used Primum Rocks as a bit of a inspiration, really. So we'll just add some some detail to this a bit there as well. And take a step back every couple of every couple of strokes. Have a bit of a step back, think where we're going with it. What we're gonna do is put a tree just here, a uh, a deciduous tree, and I'm thinking of a silver birch rather than the, the brown trunk trees there. So I've got a very pale blue color on this brush and I've got a lot of paint on the paintbrush and I'm just gonna go, I don't want a massive tall tree, but just enough. And we're just gonna brace his hand on the side and then just come down there like that, right the way through there, like so. Okay, and then maybe another one up there, like that. So I've just wiped off the uh, the blue colour off the brush, and I'm just adding on the highlight side just some pure titanium white. Now it won't stay pure because it'll pick up the colour that's underneath as we go along. Okay, but I'm just putting in just some white on the highlight side and we've got a shadow and his highlight already in place and then we can come back and put some nice colored well dark colored branches and spots and all sorts on this on this uh, tree just gonna nice. stipple on before we put any of the black specks on the uh, on the back I'm just gonna stipple on some little leafy things up here so this is sap green and umber and a little touch of of yellow ochre. Uh, just just dot it on. Reload. And uh, because we need to put the branches in and the other bits and pieces. Where I think they're gonna live. It comes down there like so. So I've put some uh, foliage up on the tree, some highlights and shadows in that foliage, and I'm just going to start with the same dark colour I used for the for the cracks on the rocks. I'm just going to try and get my hand in a comfortable position, and then we're just going to put some little black, little like little arshuey things just on on there, like that. Just a couple of little little spots here and there. If it looks too dark, I might uh, I might lighten it up a bit. But 
the the way these the way these uh, silver birches go is is they have like little horseshoe I call it like that but like an horseshoe shape sort of dark part if you know what I mean as we get less paint on the brush we'll have a little bit of a lighter one there like that and of course we'll put some put some arms on the old silver birch as well well we've got this little brush on the go with some thin paint i think we can just add a few little grasses and uh and sticks and and things just in the in the green areas we'll change the flavor as we go as well because we can add some green grasses as well like that one or two sticks twigs grass blades just down there and I think we're about finished wow that is a beautiful painting of Brimham Rocks it is truly an epic place up in Yorkshire and Yorkshire is a fantastic place if I do say so myself if you've enjoyed this one give me a big old thumbs up leave me a nice comment as well tell me if you've been to Brimham Rocks and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already it's free to do and it helps us out until next time take care of yourself stay safe and as we say in Yorkshire I see the happy days